Hey, welcome to the Moral News for the period of seven days ending on May 19, 2023. Three items today, first Canada, then America, and then we're going to Great Britain. We'll start off with Canada here, and you might remember this guy. We actually mentioned him uh, a few weeks back, a few months back. His name is Josh Alexander. He was the Catholic fellow who uh, said in his school there's only two sexes and was thrown out of his Roman Catholic high school. Well, he has been apparently very busy, and uh, he went to a, a Calgary. He went to a protest there, and he was trying to hand out Bibles there. And uh, turned out a little bit differently, though, than what you might have expected. So he's arrested for attempting to hand out Bibles at this protest. It kind of looked to me like he was the one being set upon, but there you have it. Calgary, don't really know what to say. I guess this is a local ordinance. Uh, but again, is it constitutional? Even in Canada's constitution, I guess the law will have to sort that out. Uh, interesting point. You kind of wonder about this. You know, I mean, if he was a member of my congregation, I'm not sure I would ask ask or suggest that he go to uh, a, a big, this kind of a, a protest and try to hand out Bibles there. You know, he, he was led to do that by God, then good for him. So there we have that. Well, okay, let's go to this item. Now, this is two or three months ago, I think maybe even before I started doing the moral news thing here. But this is in Jacksonville, Florida, the First Baptist Church of Jacksonville, Florida. And the local news got a hold of this. And a prominent Jacksonville mega church is now making their members sign a formal declaration opposing LGBTQ freedoms. The so called biblical sexuality agreement says marriage is only between a man and a woman, and any member who doesn't sign it will no longer be allowed to be members of the church. So it's kind of interesting how they talk about LGBTQ freedoms. So freedoms, you know, everybody is, is free. Even God allows people to practice whatever sexual things more or less they want to. I mean, the, the, there is going to be a day of judgment. I'll be judged, you'll be judged. We're all going to be uh, face, face the king of morality. You know, you can basically do virtual everything. But here's a church that decided that this, this wasn't going to be something that they agreed to. So uh, they, what about these people? Are they going to keep these people out of the church? Or they just won't be allowed to be members? Take a listen to what the pastor has to say. Uh, let, me, let me show you the statement for anybody who is unfamiliar or who is just recently joining us. I just want to be clear when we talk about the First Baptist Statement on Biblical Sexuality, this is what it is. It says that as a member of First Baptist Church, I believe that God creates people in his image as either male or female, and that this creation is a fixed matter of human biology, not individual choice. I believe marriage is instituted by God, not government, is between one man and one woman, and is the only context for sexual desire and expression. It's got some Bible verses up there that are part of the statement to ground it in the text of Scripture. I just want to say at the beginning that this is intended to be a positive statement. If you only hear about the statement uh, and don't read the statement, you won't recognize that in the statement, there is not a single sin listed. It doesn't pick on any one sin over and above any other sin. There are sins that by extension are ruled out of the statement, uh, but the statement is a pot of positive expression of what the Bible teaches about human sexuality, about marriage, about manhood and womanhood, and it means to rule out any sin that would contradict it. I want you to know that this is a statement that is from our membership. First Baptist Church is ultimately a congregational church. That is to say that the ultimate power in our church uh, is with the congregation. So uh, that, that includes me. One of the things I've heard is that uh, this is some sort of oath of allegiance that I have made people swear to me. Um, 
And, uh, you know, you read that statement and there's my name isn't in there. There's nothing about an oath of allegiance to me. Uh, In fact, this comes from our congregation. I am a servant of our congregation. I have uh, reminded this room on a couple of occasions that uh, I can be fired on a simple 51 percent majority uh, of the vote of this congregation anytime y'all want. So I serve at y'all's pleasure. You don't serve at my pleasure. And uh, this statement was approved by all of our pastors. It was approved by all of our lay leadership, and it was approved by a vote of the entire congregation. So this is, this statement is, it's not an affront to anybody at First Baptist Church. It comes from First Baptist Church as an expression of our entire congregation. Another thing I'll say about it is that this is a statement that is for our congregation. First Baptist Church has no power to enforce any of our statements or any of our wishes on anybody else. It is choose your own adventure out there. Uh, If you want to come to this church, you are welcome. If you want to go to another church or to no church, you are welcome to do that as well. Uh, I want to say, as I've always said, whenever these issues of sexuality come up, they're really controversial and prickly. And one of the things that I always say is if you disagree with us, you're welcome here. Uh, not everybody can be a member here. Now, of course, here's the, the other church across town somewhere where they said they accept everybody. So if we were looking at a biblical family, like we would probably be talking about like multiple spouses and other makeups that aren't what we think of as the nuclear family. Dickie says her church welcomes everyone, regardless of gender, race, and sexuality. The mission of the church is to love one another and to care for our neighbor, to build a just and generous community, not to say who's in and who's out or to sign something to say, yes, this is what you have to believe to be here. It would be interesting to know how the sex offender uh, training, how the sex offender screening goes in one of those kind of churches where, you know, basically anything goes sexually. I really kind of wonder how their teachers of their children's divisions and so on uh, are. Are they screened? Do they know anything about their background? Anyway, hopefully... Hopefully nothing ill will happen there. Finally, let's go over to Great Britain. And here is, uh, as you've seen before, and probably we'll see again, Calvin Robinson. Here is a voice in the wilderness. But he's interviewing a teacher, and she she saw a, a harmful situation, a child that was transitioning from one sex to another, and she reported it to her lawyers. And uh, then she got fired by the school district for following their procedures because she had talked to her lawyers. Listen up. A Christian primary school teacher who was sacked after refusing to use a pupil's preferred pronouns is taking legal action against the council for unfair dismissal and religious discrimination. She says the school helped the eight-year-old girl transition into a boy two years earlier, demanding that staff use the child's preferred male pronouns and male name. The primary school pupil was also allowed to use the boy's toilets and dressing rooms. The teacher can't be identified for legal reasons, but I spoke to her a little earlier and she explained why she felt compelled to intervene. The question I was always asking was, are we doing harm? Can we, you know, look into this and and have a proper discussion about this? Um, And so it came to the point where I formally raised it as a safeguarding concern. So I, having spoken to the head teacher, I um, sent a letter to the head and the governors of the school. Um, They basically dismissed my concerns um, and said, from their point of view, the school had done everything um, that was procedurally correct. They'd gone through the right channels to get advice and all the rest of it. But the one thing they didn't engage with was um, hundreds of pages of evidence from experts who have worked in this field, medical experts, an endocrinologist, a um, psychotherapist, a psychologist, I presented them this evidence. All these medical experts were saying, don't affirm a child. It does far more damage than good. Um, And that was the one thing they seemed unable to engage with. So anyway, really no surprises. Is there a surprise any week about the things we see here? But every now and then we see something Interesting, we want to keep up with what's happening. Listen, if you're going to be a Christian, you will suffer. You will pay a price. I will pay a price. That's okay. 
because we are going to follow our Lord. Lord be with you this next seven days.